so I was born in Helensborough, which is a little town not far from Glasgow in Scotland. And when I was growing up, sport was a, a big part of my life. That was the, the hobby that I had, you know, every weekend, every night of the, the week. I played a lot of football, tennis, um, I did athletics. Um, any sport I could try, I, I wanted to do. Um, and then when I was, was 12, um, one day I was out with some friends, came back home and I went to stand up out of my seat and my legs just gave way underneath me. Uh, I just collapsed. And initially we thought maybe it was just like a bad cramp in the back of the legs or something like that. And then at the end of that day, I was completely paralyzed from the waist down. And I spent, I ended up spending six months in hospital for, uh, for rehab because I had a condition called uh, transverse myelitis, which is a neurological condition. And, you know, for me being a really healthy and active kid, going from that to paralysed in the bed and not being able to leave the bed. It was, you know, scary for, for me, but especially for my family and my brothers and sisters, mum and dad. You know, it was a really difficult time for me, but I always had them by the side of the bed, you know, make, cheering me up, making me laugh and uh, keeping me company. So uh, that was really important for me. It really helped me get through that, that period of time. Charlie, middle ball. So the middle third, I'll put the lines out. You're going to go alternate sides for four shots and then play it out. So I'm Joe Gill and I am Gordon Reid's individual coach uh, based at the University of Stirling in Scotland. Although it's wheelchair tennis, he's still you know, a tennis player at the top of the game in the world. So what comes with that is, you know, turning up, training, things like leaving no stone unturned really. Um, putting in the hours on the court, on the training court. And in terms of you know, him as a person, obviously very respectful. We have a lot of people here that help him out, you know, on and off the court, and he's, he's always kind of very um, down to earth with everyone that you know, walks through the door with him. Yeah, um, before I was in hospital, I, I didn't really know about wheelchair tennis or really any Paralympic sport. So I think my, it was my parents that uh, discovered a wheelchair tennis club um, that was in Glasgow. You know, I wasn't sure of it because I wanted to try and get back on my feet and playing normal tennis. I thought it was normal tennis. But I went along anyway and you know, I saw some of the guys playing and I was really impressed by the way they could move and hit the ball. And uh, they just gave me a racket and, and told me to, to go and try it. And yeah, it was straight away I, I, fell, I fell in love with, with the sport. and. It was obviously a great feeling for me to be back on a tennis court again and you know, back involved in, in one of the sports that I was passionate about. Started playing some tournaments, some junior tournaments, traveling to some countries in Europe. So that all happened within the first couple of years. The first sort of main um, turning point for me was trying to qualify for the Paralympics in Beijing in 2008. No, for me at that time, uh, I just wanted to go and enjoy it. And um, I knew it was just there for experience and to understand um, what the competition was all about and what it was like to play at a Paralympics. And as soon as Beijing was finished, like it was already all eyes on, on London four years later. And I ended up losing in the quarterfinals in singles and doubles. But for me, that really motivated me to, you know, to work even harder, to go and travel more and uh, straight away go back and, and train to try and be better. And then obviously I started the, the year really well in 2016 um, before the Games, you know, winning my first Grand Slam singles title at Australia and then going through Roland Garros and making the final and then going to Wimbledon and winning there as well. So I was feeling really confident. Um, I was feeling like I was playing with a lot of freedom because I'd already 
had a lot of success that year, so I felt like you know, no matter what I did for the rest of the year, I was already happy with, with how, I, how it done. I don't hold it very often now because um, normally they're just in the cases and I take them out only when I'm doing an event, so nah, it's, like, it's a good feeling. Um, to be honest, it just takes me back to being in Rio and like, the memories that I have there. Three gold medal points for Gordon Reid. It's all gone golden for Gordon. Reid wins his first ever men's singles Paralympic gold medal. It's gold and silver for Team GB, but what a sublime performance from Gordon Reid. As close to perfection as you'll probably ever see on a tennis court. I don't think you can quite believe how well he's played there, Gordon Reid. He takes gold. I won everything almost in 2016, the big events. So then anything less than that the next year was like a disappointment to a lot of people. I felt like that, that way anyway. And I struggled really with, with that sort of probably for the next like 18 months. There was times that I thought I might stop playing and I wasn't enjoying it. You know, luckily I came out the other side and I feel like I'm getting back to the level that I want to be at. Um, I'm enjoying it, most importantly. Um, and hopefully timing it, timing it well for the, the next one next year. Yeah, it was really special to, to become part of Uniqlo team and uh, become a global ambassador for them. Um, it was amazing for me that they had a Scottish and British athlete on board with that as well being a Japanese company. Um, all, all the tournaments that we play are, are helped by them, so for me it's, it's great that I can be you know, close with them and uh, have such a, a good partnership with them. Yes, for the, for the weekend. <laughs>